And welcome to Meadowlands Racetrack. We have a temperature of 54 degrees. The track is fast. And here's tonight's changes. Joe Feraldo went from calling the shopping cart Mike to shitting his pants. More at 11. Now that the fun is over with, um, because I'm using my phone, I, the link hasn't worked. Oh crap, sorry. everybody back to the program here um, now I'm gonna help tie everything together that you've seen happening in the last uh, week or so since I've blown the cover on what I'm calling the New York harness mafia somebody actually gave me a better uh, name earlier cartel how if you were watching what Joe Feraldo has been posting on Facebook, that what Mr. Gorel did here at the Meadowlands with the out-of-competition testing, that it was illegal, and that his sole source provider, that being Dr. Malin, his client. Without mincing words, these people are criminals, and I'm gonna tell you why. Like I said, we've got, we're gonna give this to you in pieces, so you understand. Mr. Ferrell's contention is that the bloods were Ill illegally obtained by an organization here, Bryce Cody in the Meadowlands, to be sent to Hong Kong and tested without the authority of New York State Gaming, who he says owns those bloods. Well, you couldn't be more wrong, Mr. Ferraldo. Here's the truth of the matter of the fact. What you didn't realize that back in 2018, and you're forgetting or you're hoping people are not going to find out or figure out is, that there was a much bigger fish in the pond at that time investigating harness racing. That being the Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's who obtained the bloods, Mr. Feraldo. And they were given by, by New York State, not New York State King. Remember who had the bloods. Well, just say it like that. You can figure out the rest for yourself. You don't own those bloods, Mr. Feraldo. All right, cry, scream all you want. And what's even more dis disturbing is, while this was all going on, what it revealed was how you people were controlling the not testing at the time, the selective testing, and what was happening to those bloods after they were drawn. Now, I'm gonna give you one example here. Does anybody know the name Dr. Christian Ryan? He's a thoroughbred guy. How does this tie into harness racing? Well, let's just say it like this. He's a perfect example of someone who went to the source to find out what the deal was with testing in New York State to try to get the alerts. Like I said, there were people calling asking certain individuals what they were testing for, which tracks were testing it, 
and if the and if the feds at the time when they found out because what happened is a red flag went up and this gentleman that the Federal Bureau of Investigation may be doing an investigation. And at the time, they were talking about SGF-1000 and how it may be masked by dexamethasone. I'm gonna just give you a couple of lines again from the wiretaps, and I'm gonna fill in the blanks for you. He actually goes and says to this person who he calls, who works at a lab, I'm not gonna give the name. He works at the lab in New York State. The only lab in New York State. He runs the lab in New York State. The only lab in New York State. You know who I'm talking about. He's on the phone with this gentleman saying, well, you know, just because they can test for it doesn't mean they will. He even adds about the, the growth hormones and it costs a lot of money to test. Like, they don't believe that it's being tested. Now we're talking about the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He goes, what's with the, again, expletive name that somebody told me? It was a good name. Now they're even making fun of the names of the products that were sold by Seth Fishman. You know, all the names that everybody can recognize. This guy is saying, because he was selling the stuff and distributing it. Specifically, his go-to was SGF-1000. He says, you know, it was something that was cheesy, kind of good, you know, one word thing. But what's, what's really damning here is that he wanted to get the man that he thought that he could go to, he wanted to talk to Jason Service. Now, you could look this up. This is something that's been in front of you for almost two years. This gentleman was trying to go through the thoroughbred trainer, again, to find out... Um, where this was stemming from. And he couldn't get through the service. He wanted to talk to Jason, so he talked to his uh, his assistant, Argetta, Henry Argetta, and um, was told that the DA's office from, from Manhattan approached Jason's service. Now, they know the federal government is involved. Now, this is in 2018. Remember this, this guy then calls back to the lab guy in New York State to raise the red flag. Now, the guy in New York State is getting defensive because this guy is demanding answers and wants to know what's going on. This other gentleman had already known and now the cover's blown. So now they want to sever communication. The gentleman from New York State tells uh, Kristen Ryan he either has to cease or desist or he's going to go to jail. He's threatening him. Threatening him. Because now the names are out there. And they've done a pretty good job of covering that up for the last... When did this start? We'll just say 18. Let's say the last six years. And I'm talking about the veterinarian who designed the drug testing uh, in New York State. The same veterinarian that wasn't even offered a position in the drug testing with HISA. Now we all know why. The same veterinarian who was in contact with those racing in New York State and the governing bodies of New York State. New York State Gaming, all the racetracks, and our friend Joe Feraldo, his attorney, who was giving the signals to Yonkers Raceway. Now, what else was going on back at that time? Remember Nick Ferriero was also fiddling with the draws? Nick Ferriero had his own wagering account on the computer in the race office? Why? Why were they doing this? Because they were all colluding with themselves. Not only were they controlling your money, not only were they controlling the testing, they were controlling the races, they were controlling the draws, they were gambling on the races as well. Every aspect of the business was used as their device to benefit illegally. And this includes specifically the gentleman who is having an absolute meltdown right now, talking about me, his least worry. I'm just delivering the message, and now he knows what's coming. 
in the next two episodes of this, I'm going to have the names as well to go along with this. But you have his veterinarian. Um, throwing up the red flags as to what's coming. Now they can't stop it because they knew back then that the federal government was testing. They were trying to one-up the federal government by finding out what are they testing for? How are they able to test for it? They didn't know about Hong Kong yet. They didn't realize that they had already gotten let's say their hands on the substances so they had the test for it let's just say that now they had to go on damage control head off to all the vets and trainers in new york state guys like richie banker right mr feraldo cool it you can't use this you can't use this the feds are on us now and then they redesigned again they weren't only defrauding the public they were even trying to, I don't know how you could say this. Um, <laughs> they were conspiring against the government to try to stay a step ahead of them, if that makes any sense. And like I said, not only were they doing this, they were also fixing races. Again, all the same group. Why was, I'm just gonna say his name, Dr. Malin, and Joe Ferraldo, what you two are gonna be found guilty of is gonna send you to, to federal prison longer than anybody else. It's gonna make Seth Fishman's uh, sentencing look like, you know, a, camp, a, a, a weekend at day camp. What you guys have done to this industry, I saw I was being sent screenshots of what Joe Ferraldo is posting on Facebook right now because I'm on my phone and I'm not gonna switch accounts back and forth playing games. Um, I was sent that in response to what's happening. He actually, somebody said to him, do you see what's happening with the commission right now? The commission, the commission, the commission. He's trying to blame the commission for all this. Sorry, Joe, it's too late, sorry. The commission may have been in the know, but you were the one doing the cover, all right? So his response to this person was, it's sad, isn't it? And you know something, I agree with you, Joe. It is sad. What you've done to this industry is sad. What you've done to the horses is sad. What you've done to the people in the industry is sad. What you've done to the, uh, what you had left as a customer base, gambled on it, that are gone now is sad. What you've done by stealing money out of Yonkers Raceway is sad. What you've done having criminals, uh, Scott Dinamenico, who was involved with Nick Ferriero at the time with the race fix, with the, uh, the draw fixing. It's funny, you end up with these guys. It's, it's, it's amazing how all these criminals gravitate you. Kind of like, you, you know, you're the sun and your galaxy is all the criminals of planets or the planets of criminals, whichever way you want to say. So not only that, it's not just sad, Joe, it's illegal. The list of felonies, I wouldn't even know where to start. The felonies that you guys are guilty of. And we've only just begun. I'm just giving you a little tidbit of what is gonna come in the next three to five days when we name names and dates and places, full wiretaps, testimony, everything, Joe, which includes you and two other pretty big players in your game. Then out of nowhere, I get another text or another screenshot of horsemen are finally standing up to him publicly. Stefan Bouchard started, the, uh, started this on Facebook asking why people aren't able to get their stall applications in for 2024 and why are horses that were racing there this year suddenly denied yet next year. Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, Stefan, anybody in that conversation, anyone that's been denied next year, you're asking the wrong guy because he is the man who's denying you. It has nothing to do with the race office. This I know 
by the phone call I made last week to alleviate someone else's issue, and it worked. If you want to get anything done, if you want to race at Yonkers Raceway next year, I suggest you directly make contact and communicate your issues with Alex Tadoyan, okay? And remind them that, that you, along with Michael Petrelli, all right, have the contacts in Albany to make it a very unnecessary discussion that while they are lobbying for one of the three gaming licenses to the tune of over one billion dollars in investment, all right, do they really need this nonsense, which is the racing end of Yonkers Empire City, and a clown like Joe Ferraldo risking that for them? If you want to race at Yonkers, you need to go directly to Alex and tell them, we can't even get, or not, much, not so much can we even get uh, considered to race here, horses that were already racing here this year are being denied. We don't know why. They aren't even looking at the stall applications. They're not being received. And what was Mr. Ferraldo's suggestion as the leader of the SOA and why? Who should be on the phone handling that for you? He says, well, I suggest you send it through the mail. That is what your president of the SOA and Y, criminal syndicate, suggests you people who are being declined or denied racing at Yonkers Raceway in 2024 do. The, the, the guy across the way over here, as dirty and disgusting as he is, Mark Ford, does a better job than that. He actually does. One thing I know that he does, he will try to get you in. You'll get decimated if you don't belong here. He'll get you in. I think what I'm trying to explain to you all is, Joe Ferraldo acts as though he's God. And he's going to be the God that failed. It's a great Metallica song. He put himself on a pedestal now for the last 15 to 20 years. He has gained supreme control of everywhere except the building I'm sitting in now and the racetrack that's in front of me and those two other tracks up in Tioga and Vernon, New York. That's one guy that's bigger than him. Everyone else is afraid of him. Well, let me tell you something. As of this past week, I know for certain Mr. Ferraldo is scared to death of me and the people that I am dealing with. Where is this all coming from? Where are these facts that he thought he had buried for good coming from? They thought it blew over. They thought it went away with the first wave. They thought they suppressed it. They thought they were able to, well, basically uh, blackmail and threaten all of you people enough that nobody would ever speak up and dare dig to find out any of this information. That is, cl that is out there and would eventually come up and bite him in the ass. But never did they expect that somebody from the inside of harness racing who understands what's going on be the voice of what's happening now, and that's me. They cannot control me. Their biggest mistake was, as they said, well, like Mr. Ferraldo said this morning, which he was incorrect, that I, I can no longer obtain a USTA membership. Well, M Michelle Kopiak, if you listen to the recording of the conversation I had with her, uh, said otherwise. Joe, you've lost your mind. And I understand why, because you've lost control. You've never ever had to deal with something like this, have you, Lord Feraldo? It's over. And I guarantee you, by the time this is all done, you're gonna end up in prison. Bet you one to nine, with the rail, downhill both ways. You're done. We're not going to bring up anybody else tonight. I was even, re I was going through some of the notes. I even found this in Pollock report too, that Ryan even told another vet to be careful. They were, they were literally networking around the criminals, which are, I don't know who's not a criminal and wasn't dealing in this stuff. We're networked together giving each other the information, saying, we just found out this has happened, this is what, this has happened. And you know what they were finding it out? This is the worst part, like I said. Dr. Malin himself. And 
Where were they finding it out? In, in harness racing across the river, over at Yonkers Raceway? Joseph Farrell, through Dr. Malin, his client. If, if nothing else, he should be disbarred immediately. And at the same time, he should be kicked out of the United States Trotting Association. I hope Russell Williams is listening to this or gets word of this, what his chairman has been doing. These are all facts. Mr. Williams, you say that you care so much about your babies and the Hanover Shoe Farm name? Prove it. The $250,000 bullshit challenge means nothing. You've done nothing. You've accomplished nothing since then. The federal government has done all the work for you. Are you going to help clean up the sport? Are you going to take it back? Or is it going to take what's happening today? The first uprising I've ever seen that people are speaking up to Mr. Feraldo in public, in the open, with no fear. And you know why? Me. That's why. I've been able to stand in front and take all the shots for them over the last year to get to this point now where they, you are all being exposed. And it's just becoming easier and easier and easier. And I see more people grabbing on grab in the past week, never seen anything like it. Those li that silent majority that we were talking about aren't silent anymore. And you can't stop them. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna stick around and watch some races. I'm here to see my boy Dave Yarrick. I gotta go down and heckle him in the post parade. But um, there was more I was gonna go into. I just don't wanna go too deep into it. Because I believe in the kiss, the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. People will understand. They had been raping this industry, and you people now, if you can think of an angle or somewhere where there is that they could gain money, they did. I, I wouldn't doubt that they had the blacksmiths paid off or, or somehow extorted, getting kickbacks. I, after seeing all this and you put it all together, oh, I gotta go. Nope, my dad. I, I, I just don't know what to say. But they're, they're caught. And they're caught big time. I'm, t I'm begging you people now, like I said. I've asked for help. It's, it's, I, I don't like doing it. I had to come here tonight. I've got to be here again next week. I've got two other meetings in Trenton. I've got meetings in New York City. And it costs money. And like I said, I am willing to do your dirty work. And I am willing to stick my neck out to the, these horses and the sport of harness racing. Not the industry. That's all up to you guys. I want to see the sport come back. What happens with the industry? I have nothing to do with that. If you understand what I mean. I love harness racing. The business and the crime and the industry part of it? No, that's not my bad. Um, what was I saying? So I'm willing to take the bullet and keep doing this because we got them this time. We got them and we got them bad and they know it. Uh, and again, over the next uh, couple of days, we're going to come back with some the biggest hits yet. And what else? Oh, please don't be afraid to send me anything you know. People came forward this week, like I said, with issues at Yonkers Raceway. And Mr. Feraldo doesn't know I was able to resolve them. Did you hear that, Joe? The same question that Stefan Bouchard is asking you about why he can't race there? Let's just put it this way. I did the job that you were supposed to do as president and representative of the uh, horsemen of the SOANY. I went right over your head. Like I told you all, all of this got done by reaching outside the reach of harness racing. None of this is from inside. Like I said, all the commissions, all the horsemen's associations, the racetracks even, the veterinarians, and the lab, we're in on this, okay? And I'm not mincing words when I say that. New York State Gaming is complicit in this. They knew. New Jersey knew. Pennsylvania knew. This was all out there, and they just buried their heads in the sand and did nothing. It could have been stopped. Why didn't they stop it? They were part of it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like I said, anything happens. Your anonymity will always be protected. 
names will never be mentioned. If you reach out to help, your anonymity is protected because they will come to try to hurt you still. Now, they're being they have nothing to lose, they're going to come at you even harder. Don't back down and don't be afraid. I got to go watch Dave. Catch you all later.